The stalemate between Governor Christie and legislators over vacant court benches is a big step closer to being over. The Senate Judiciary Committee has unanimously nominated eight judges to fill posts in Essex County Court, one of the most overburdened courthouses in the state. Joining us from Trenton is Senate Majority Leader Loretta Weinberg. Thanks so much for being with us, Senator. Thank you, Mary Alice. Will the approval of these nominations even make a dent in the statewide judge shortage? Well, it's certainly better than not having approved them. Uh, Essex County, in particular, has had a, a very long and onerous shortage. So I think this will go part of the way to um, helping alleviate that. You know, I don't know if the average citizen realizes how important it is to have a full judiciary, whether their cases are small claims cases or uh, family law issues or uh, issues of, cr of criminal activity. If you don't have a judge to hear the case, your case never gets adjudicated. It got so bad in Bergen County that civil cases are no, that, that are going to be longer than two weeks have been postponed indefinitely until these judge these benches are filled again. Uh, yeah, and I, I'm a, a little mystified myself as to why I think there has been general agreement between and among the senators in Bergen County on a bipartisan basis of uh, who, what names they're willing to recommend to the governor, and then he has to make the nominations. But certainly, as of this moment, there are six openings, and we have six names. Uh, that, Tell me how much, know, how much backdoor to. stuff goes on. Do you know that these six names will get past the governor? No, I don't know that. I only know that uh, among us, as far as I know, among us, meaning the five state senators that represent Bergen County, we were all willing to sign off on those six names, which equal the number of openings yeah. that exist in Bergen County right now. Okay, the State Bar Association last week sent a letter to the governor and the legislature urging you all to put personal and political differences aside. I think that was the quote. Do you think mm -hmm. this will make a difference in filling these vacancies? Well, you know, I think Judge Doyne was right to uh, call attention to the potential of problems here uh, since these six openings do exist. Uh, but again, uh, as far as I know, uh, it is... It isn't because of any personal or political differences among the five Bergen County senators. Senator, let me change the subject. Um, Governor Christie has vetoed two bills that you've sponsored twice. The Unfair Wage Recovery Act, which is the state equivalent of the Lilly Ledbetter Act, and the Wage Transparency Act. What would these bills have done for workplace equality? Well, I, I think the governor has some kind of an anti-woman veto pen that he must keep in a special place on his desk, whether we're talking about uh, money for uh, family planning centers that he's vetoed. Uh, the, both these bills are about pay equity for women. And uh, there is no legitimate reason why they would be vetoed, except, of course, the governor is a national candidate and seems to be more interested in pleasing the very right-wing conservative element of the Republican Party rather than worrying about the women of New Jersey. Well, you said that there was no apparent reason. Uh, Governor Christie uh, gave a reason, actually, when he vetoed the Wage Parents Transparency Act. He said, I will not sign into law a bill that promotes bureaucracy over the real progress of our citizens. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think that, as I said, there's no real reason for the governor to have vetoed it. What it requires is that we know about uh, gender in companies that do business with the state of New Jersey. We're not talking about companies that are strictly private and are not getting public business. We're talking about companies that collect varied amounts of money from the taxpayers. So we're asking them to divulge the gender and job classifications of their employees that can be done very easily. It can be computerized easily. Doesn't need a bureaucracy. This is the second time that the governor's vetoed both of these bills. Are you going to continue to try and get these bills passed in the next session? Well, you know, I always describe myself as being an optimist. 
that if I weren't optimistic, it would be difficult to kind of stay as a member of the legislature to work toward uh, the kinds of things that I believe in. And I point to issues like banning indoor smoking that took over 10 years from the time I first became involved with that issue to marriage equality, which took a, a, an equal amount of time. So in this um, environment, one needs patience and focus, and then hopefully a new governor who will look kindly to signing these bills. You're getting a reputation as someone who can't take no for an answer. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Senate Majority Leader Loretta Weinberg, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Mary Alice.